It's beyond doubt that space is full of mysteries, from black holes that are ultimate cosmic quicksand to dark matter and dark energy. Our species has barely gone past our own planet's moon, and most of what we've learned about deep space has gotten pieced together from falling objects and views from telescopes. Some famous mysteries like the face on Mars and the Black Knight satellite have been solved, and with advanced technology, more and more mysteries will be solved. In this video, we learn more about Elon Musk and NASA's terrifying discovery on Neptune that changes everything. You don't want to miss this. There's something peculiar going on inside Neptune, as it's further away from Uranus, yet the surface temperatures are remarkably similar. When Voyage 2 reached Neptune in 1989, just over a decade after setting off on its historical journey through the solar system, it discovered six new moons took the first photos of the planet's rings and noted an especially violent storm. The storm was like a wonder. There was a swirling, counterclockwise wind of up to 1,500 miles per hour in the southern hemisphere, which was the strongest ever recorded. Astronomers named it the Great Dark Spot, and it had disappeared by the time the Hubble Space Telescope looked at the planet five years later. Still, the astronomers were keen to find out why the winds were so strong. Moreover, they were perplexed by different issues. Voyager 2 revealed that Neptune was warmer than Uranus, despite being further from the Sun. As Brian Cox, a physicist, stated in his BBC documentary, The Planets, the source of this extra heat remains a mystery. But does that insinuate we have a double puzzle on our hands? And can one mystery help explain the other? Before going any further, what do we actually mean by warmer? Because Neptune is a gas giant, we can't test its average surface temperature at ground level in the way that we could on our own planet's solid surface. Instead, Neptune's temperature must be taken at altitude because its core is likely small. The problem with temperature, we can only measure temperatures in the outermost layers, said Michael Wong, a planetary scientist at the University of California in Berkeley, through an email. In doing so, we discover that Neptune isn't actually hotter than Uranus in real terms. They have a similar temperature. However, since Neptune gets less solar illumination as it's further from the Sun, this shouldn't be the case. The similarity in temperature indicates that Neptune is warmer in terms of how much heat it gives out compared to the amount of heat it absorbs from the Sun. Voyager's measurements show Neptune emits more than twice as much heat as it absorbs from the Sun, while Uranus does not. Anthony Del Genio of the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies told about space. So then, this becomes intriguing. This is because Neptune is not unique in this case. Jupiter and Saturn also emit almost twice as much heat as they absorb, but Uranus does not, Del Genio stated. Uranus is the oddball. The progression of temperature as you go further away from the Sun shows Jupiter to be the warmest of the gas giants, then Saturn, and then Neptune. Uranus is the one out of place, Del Genio said. Yet that unusual result is associated with the fact that Uranus does not have a significant internal heat source. So, why are Neptune's winds so strong? Winds are probably generated deeper than sunlight can penetrate, so a combination of internal heat and rotation likely produce them said Amy Simon, a senior NASA scientist for the Planetary Atmosphere Research at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. He was raising the issue of why Uranus and Neptune's winds don't match, given they have the same rotation rates. It tells us something is different between partially internal heat or something else, said Simon. Neptune's wind can blow up to 1,500 mile an hour, and Uranus is at 560 miles an hour. They're both very fast, and peak at speeds faster than Jupiter. NASA states that Jupiter's great red spot can blow at 384 miles an hour. However, internal heat alone cannot explain the speeds, considering Uranus does not admit extra heat. The interior structure of the planets, their radial density profiles, masses, and core size, is extremely essential for understanding the winds as we see them. How the winds form and how deep they go are questions getting answered for Saturn and Jupiter thanks to NASA's Juno and Cassini spacecraft. This is because of the excellent data they obtain, which implies good models for the interior structure can be made. Computer simulations indicate that the winds of the ice giants are confined to shallow depths in the upper layers of the atmosphere. This may tell that the fast winds we see on Neptune and Uranus are partly because of the latent heat release of condensation for materials like water. Del Genio also questions the available data because we concentrate on one particular altitude when measuring winds on Neptune. The winds at other altitude may be slower or faster, he said. We don't know, 
because we've never dropped probes into the atmosphere of most of the outer planets. So how SpaceX's massive Starship rocket might unlock the solar system and beyond? If all goes according to plan, SpaceX will launch the biggest rocket in human history. Towering almost 400 feet tall, the rocket, called Starship, is designed to take astronauts to the moon. In addition, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk has bigger ambitions. He wants to use it to settle people on Mars. The rocket will definitely revolutionize what we know about neighboring planets and moons. Starship would totally change the way that we can do solar system exploration, says a planetary scientist from Purdue University, Ali Bramson. Planetary science will just explode. If it lives up to its billing, scientists are already talking about sending missions to Neptune and its biggest moon in the outer solar system, bringing back large quantities of space rock from Earth's moon and Mars, and even building innovative ways to protect Earth from incoming asteroids. Starship comprises a giant spacecraft on top of a large booster called the Super Heavy. They both can land on Earth, so they can be reused, reducing costs. The whole vehicle will have the capacity of lifting 100 metric tons of cargo and people into space on typical low-cost missions. The volume of usable space within Starship is a whopping 1,000 cubic meters, big enough to fit the entire Eiffel Tower when it's disassembled. As a result, scientists are super excited. So, we can now go to Neptune. One idea from an international team of scientists named Connex, that's the Conceptual Exploration Research, is an Arcanum spacecraft that uses Starship's heavy lifting capabilities to explore Neptune and its largest moon, Triton. Neptune has been visited only once, a flying visit by NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft in 1989, and there's still a lot we don't know about it. Nobody's really thinking on this next level about what Starship could enable, says a researcher at the University of Vienna and the co-lead of Connex. That's what Arcanum is designed to showcase. Weighing in at 21 metric tons, the spacecraft would be four times heavier than the largest deep space probe to date, NASA and the ESA's Cassini-Huygens mission, which explored Saturn from 2004 to 2017. Today, no existing rocket launches such a craft, but Starship would make it possible. Arcanum would have many components, including a lander to study Triton, an orbiter to study Neptune, and a penetrator to strike Triton's surface and perform a seismic experiment to understand its geology and its structure. The mission could get accompanied by a telescope, allowing for studies of the outer solar system and assisting in the hunt for planets around other stars. Some ideas are even more speculative. A physicist from the University of California, Santa Barbara, calculated that a large enough rocket, like Starship, could be used to stop an asteroid from hitting Earth. Such a mission could carry enough explosives to destroy an asteroid, as large as a 10 kilometer wide rock that wiped out the dinosaurs. Its fragments would harmlessly burn up in the atmosphere before getting the chance to reach Earth. Does this mean dinosaurs will finally be avenged? There are plenty of grounds for excitement considering what Starship could do if it's successful. From the inner to the outer solar system, and probably beyond, it may open up an entirely new era of space science.